first part of the question asks us to find the numbers of four letter chords. So I will prepare four slots first. And the chords must be formed from the letters in the word Sembungi. And no letters can be repeated. It means that one I use, let's say, S letters. S letter will no longer available for us to pick for the second or the third times. We have add letters with no identical letters. Since the first part have no conditions, so my first slot, I can pick any of the add letters. So I've add ways to choose. So after I pick one of the letters, I will, let's say I pick S. So I will slash off from the selections. Now we left with only seven ways. So let's say the second times I pick B. So I will left with only six for the third slot. Let's say I pick N, I left with only five choices. So since this is a continuous event, I picking one letter after another, so I can use the multiplication rules to times all the number of ways together, and in the end, I will have 1680 ways, or I can write it as at P4. P means permutations where the arrangement do matters. Since they provide us with at choices, but I only need four, because I only pick four letters. So this is why we have 1680 ways. Next. They said how many of these chords eventually start with a consonant. Consonant means that it's not vowel, it's not A, E, I, O, U. So from here, we know S, M, B, N, Y are eventually the consonants. So we have five consonants, since they say must start with a consonant. So the first slot is now have a condition. It must be one of these five letters. So the first slot, we have five ways to choose. Once I pick, let's say I pick S. So now I will left with only seven letters. So the remaining seven letters can rearrange themselves in the remaining three slots. But since this is also a continuous event, I can time them together. So this is why I have 1050 ways. Or I can write down as five times seven P3. The five is for the first slot because we only have five choices. And the remaining seven letters can be rearranged themselves in the remaining three slots. So it's why we have 1050 ways. Question number two, calculate the probability for someone to guess a password of a laptop that containing six characters like this, that are selected from all the numbers and alphabets. For this case, I will assume that the alphabets are not case sensitive. It means that all of the 26 alphabets no matter it's a capital letters or small letters, it doesn't matter. If they say they are case sensitive, means the capital letter and the small letter is different, then we go to times 2. But for this case, I will assume that it's not case sensitive. And they say all the numbers. So it means it must be from 0 to 9, or together we have 10 numbers. Since they say we are free to choose the numbers and alphabets, so we can eventually combine the choices. Means for each of the slots, I can have 36 choices. But don't forget, we can repeat the same letters again and again, right? Because it's how the password works. Let's say I would like to have my password as TVT222. So it doesn't matter, I can repeat for how many times, it's out to my preference. So for each of the slot, I will have 36 number of choices. So since it's a continuous event, because I pick the letter after one another. So we can do times together, we have 36 times 36 times 36 for 6 times. So I can use 36 power of 6. But don't forget, the answer to find the probability. Since I know out from the 36 power of 6 combination, there must be one correct password. So probability, the formula is whatever that you're interested, your interested event divided by the total number of possible event to happen. For this case, the total number of possible ways to create the password, which is 36 power of 6. And I'm only interested in your password, which is the only one password that you have. So 1 over 36 power of 6, which will give me a very small number. Because why? Because it's so difficult to guess your password, because it's too many combinations. We're going to find number of ways the letters in the word pullas can be arranged if each of the arrangement must be not begin with the letter S. So it means that we're going to rearrange the letters in pullas, which is five letters. So we're going to prepare the five slot first. 
But there is a condition where they say that the word cannot begin with letter S. So S is banned for the first slot. So if S is banned, we left with only four choices, either P, U, L, or A. So the first slot, I will only have four choices. So let's say I pick U. So now we left with four letters that can be rearranged themselves in the remaining four slots. Since the letters is picking after one another, so we can use multiplication rules times all together, we have 96 ways. Or I can write down as 4 times 4 P4. The first 4 is for the first slot with the conditions, and the remaining 4 letters can rearrange themselves in the 4 slots. How about now, they say, the word cannot end with S or P. So it means that P or S is banned for the last slot. So if Ben P or S, now we left with Ula, U-L-A. So we have three ways to choose for the last slot. So let's say I pick U again. So now we left with only four letters that can rearrange themselves in the remaining four slots. Three, the last slot, and the remaining four, three, two, one. Or I can write down as three times four P4. The three is for the last slot, and the remaining four letters will be redistributed in the four slots. Or, I am so free that I can write down all of the combinations that end with S and P. As you can see here, we have 24S and 24P. If there's no condition, we know there are five factorial ways to rearrange the five letters. And I'm going to minus off the 24 words that end with S and minus the 24 word that end with P. So in the end, I will have 72 different words that doesn't end with S or P. In a food style match, a match can either end with win, loss, or draw. Now we have the Red Eagle food style team going to join the five food style matches. And we're going to find out how many ways they can end the match with. So it means that they have five food style matches we can use the five slot to represent each of the mesh, and we know each of the mesh can end up with win, loss, or draw. Each of the mesh we have three way to end, but since each of the mesh will be continue after one another, so we can use the multiplication rule to times all together. This is why we have two hundred and forty three ways to end the mesh. We're going to find the number of possible arrangement for the letters in the word of Janjang if the letter N and the letter G must be together. So we're going to put N and G stick together in a box first, and the remaining word, I will just put it at one box. And now, do you realize that? We have double J, double A, and double N. So we have three pair of the identical letters. So we're going to rearrange themselves in this one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven slots. But do you realize that? one of the slot is fused together because this slot is meant to be occupied by N and G because they must be together. So all together, we have how many ways to reshuffle the letter cards? So we have six ways to rearrange because these two is fused together. We will treat this one as only one object. But don't forget, this NG can rearrange themselves in two factorial ways because it can be NG or GN, but just remember they must be together. And we have identical letters. So it means that we are double counting because we cannot differentiate either this is the first J or the second J. So we have three pair of identical letters. So we're going to divide it by two factorial for three times. So all together, we're going to have six factorial way to rearrange the six cards and two ways, two factorial ways, to rearrange themselves for N and G. And divided by the duplicate for the identical objects, which is the identical letters, for J, for A, and for N. So in the end, we're only left with 180 different arrangement. Now we're going to sell shirts in four size, which is S, M, L, and XL. But now we only have the stock of 2S, 3M, 6L and 2XL. And I want to find the number of ways that I can sell off 
all of the shirts. So now we have all together 13 shirts. So I prepare 13 slots first to represent my first cell, second, third, until the last piece of it. It means that now I'm wondering how can I sell the shirts. Maybe the first cells is consists of S size. And after that, there is a customer that looking for the XL size. And next one, maybe is the M size. And again, is the S size. I don't know what is a sequence of me selling it off. It based on my luck on that day, right? And now, for the first cells, on the first cells, we have 13 shirts to choose, right? It might be either one of them. So I say that it's 13 way to choose. After I selling off my first shirt, now I will leave you only 12 shirts to sell, right? And the numbers keep on decreasing and we are very happy of it because why? When the stock is keep decreasing, our money keep on increasing until the last piece is selling it off. But don't forget, we have identical objects for this case. Because the S size, we don't know we are selling which S first, right? Maybe it's the first one or the second one because they are identical. We cannot see through it any other difference. So this is why we have we have 13 factorial way to arrange the selling of S, M, L and X, L. But we're going to divide it by the identical 2S size, 3M size and the 6L and the 2XL because they make no differences usually. So this is why we left you only this number of ways. Hey, if you have any questions or would like to see any kind of video, do leave your comments below and let me know. If you want to support us so that we could make more videos like this, the simplest way is just by sharing the video with your friends. Click the like buttons and consider subscribe to this channel. See you in the next video.